All right, we're back. Thanks again for joining me. This video is the continuation of building the David Lish Forge. Again, if you haven't checked him out on Instagram or on his website, it's well worth your while. He's super creative and highly recommended you, you kind of watch the stuff that he does because it's helped me because he, he likes to teach people. So he, uh, he, gives, he gives a lot of tips and pointers. Uh, this, is, this video is going to be making the actual forge. So I'm going to go through a parts list. And the first thing we need is a big old chunk of 8 to 9 inch pipe. This is actually a, a bollard. I, I went around and checked every place I could to try to find a dead oxygen cylinder, but I couldn't find anything. So I went to my steel supplier here in town and they had an eight foot long bollard, which I didn't need that much, but it was kind of my only option. And I paid them seven bucks to cut this for me, which in my mind is well worth it so I don't have to use the angle grinder. But anyway, this is, uh, I believe, eight and five eighths. That's an eight, eight and a quarter inside diameter, eight and five eighths outside diameter. So it's a 16th inch wall. And I believe this will be perfect for the body. And the length is 11 inches. So a lot of this stuff, I've probably seen this stuff laying around work sites a million times but never really thought to pick it up but this could be easy to get for some people a little harder for others but that's the main body the next item is two 18 inch long three quarter inch tube so you want to get the uh, 0.65 or 0.95 wall I believe is what we're after because we also need a chunk of a uh, half inch square tube. And this is used for two things. First one is to, when you're actually building the forge, you're gonna use this to raise up these pieces to the correct height. But also, you're gonna be able to use this as a tool rest, because it will slide inside of this three quarter inch. So if you get the thicker wall, then this half inch piece isn't going to fit in there. Our fourth items, fifth and sixth items, I guess, is this is one inch bar. And you're going to want a five to six inch length of it and then two, like two to three inch lengths of it. And the purpose of this is it's going to be welded to the bottom of the forge and it'll fit inside of this one inch pipe that we use to build the burner. And I've actually made a stand out of this one inch pipe. So the forge is gonna fit right inside of here and then you'll be able to rotate it and move it around and all that good stuff. So the next item is two pieces of 18 inch long by about three to four, well, four to five inches wide. And I believe this is 3 16 plate. You can probably go thinner or thicker. It it's, probably doesn't matter too much. But these are gonna be used for the brick rests of the forge. Next item is some nails. So the nails are gonna be used to hold the kale wool inside of the forge. And you can probably just get regular old nails and remove the zinc coating because you have to you have to weld on them. Uh, but I got horseshoe nails. These kind of seemed like they would work really well for what I needed. So we got that. And our next item is some kale wool. So this stuff, you want to get the one inch thick, dense 
I believe it's rated at 2,600 degrees. And you'll want a width of at least 12 inches long because it needs to be a little bit more than the length of the forge because this stuff will shrink up a little bit to the 11 inches that you need. So KOL, you can get this stuff at Iron Dungeon Forge and you can also get it on eBay at uh, Iron Knows Best. I'll leave links to those two places or the names of those two places below. So the next thing you need is some Mizzou castable refractory. This is gonna be used to line the forge over the top of the KO wool so you have a nice solid surface. And right here you can see the Mizzou castable. This, I believe, I think I got this on eBay. There's probably many different places to get it. Maybe you have a local place that you can get it from. But um, this might be the most expensive part of the whole forge build, but I think this is enough to do several forges and fix forges if you need, if you need to. And then the last item that you need is a soft brick. And you only need a one inch, but you'll need enough to extend to the 11 inches. And these are nine inches, so you need an additional two inches to get to the length you need. But with the two inch, you can just cut it in half, slice off what you need off of the remaining piece, and then you'll have plenty. So once you have all this stuff, we can start building the forge. Oh yeah, you're gonna also need the burner that we made in the last video, and I will leave a link to this video right up top here. All right, so we might as well just get right into this. So here we've got the eight inch pipe, and right here I've got the uh, half inch square tube, and we're just gonna place that at the front and the back, and then we're gonna take these three quarter inch tubes and put them on the right and left hand side. So what this half inch does is it raises these up high enough that when you put your plates on here, it's gonna give you enough distance that your, uh, your soft brick is gonna fit in there just perfectly. So get this on where they need to be. And then we're gonna center up these three quarter inch pieces. So we have the same in the front and the back. So three and a half on the front, three and a half on the back. Get them nice and centered. And then we can tack weld these and then we'll flip it over and stitch weld them. Before I flip this over, I might as well slap on these brick rests. So we just need to center these up as well. Now we can flip this over. And then do some stitch welding just to make sure that none of this stuff comes off. Because we don't want that.
So the next thing we want to do is get this thing leveled out. So I'm going to weld a piece to my table so that I can get this leveled up. And then once we have this level, then we can put Okay, now that we have this level, now we can take and mark the center-ish of our forge. And then we wanna put our five to six inch, our five to six inch, one inch rod on here. And then we just want to make sure we have this squared up and then give it a little tack. And then put a level on it. To make sure we're level this way. That's pretty close. Yep, that's about where we want it. And then we'll just weld this back side. We're looking pretty good right there. So once we have all this squared up, then we'll just finish welding around it. Last thing before we put this onto the stand is we need to weld some of our little nails in here. And what these are gonna do is help hold the kale wall in the forge. So we just need to decide which way the burner is gonna be coming in from. And we're gonna, we're gonna come in from this side so we want our nails facing the same direction. That way when we put our kale wool in, it'll push up onto the burner and onto the nails. So all we wanna do is just put a couple kind of facing up like that. So two in the front, two in the back. Now that we have that all welded up, we can come over to the stand that I made that's got the one inch tube that we used for the blower. And we can put this right on there. And now we have a stand and a forge body on there. So the next step is pretty important. So we need to decide where the blower is gonna go. And the way you want this is you want it to come in almost directly from the side and your lining is going to come down about an inch to an inch and a half or that's about an inch and a quarter right there so you want your blower to go in in such a way that it's going to fall just below the lining and then spiral around so basically we just have to decide where we're going to drill the hole and I believe this would be just about perfect right here. 
we'll make a mark over here about the center of the burner. And then we'll just transfer that line all the way to the center here. And then we have to drill a hole or cut a hole if you're good with a torch, which I'm not. So I'm just gonna cut a hole and then we can adjust it from there, put a couple tack welds and then do a final adjustment after we put the liner in. cut now we have a hole for our burner and there's actually space here to do some adjustments I think once you've done a few of these and you kind of have a better idea as to where this goes you can make the hole more exact but for me this is my first time and I want to be able to adjust this to where it needs to be now I'm going to make a little bit of a mess and cut this brick in half. I'm just going to eyeball this. perfect but good enough I got the soft brick cut in half and placed in the floor of the forge now it's time for the kale wool so I almost forgot one detail you may be wondering what these two three inch long inch round pieces are for so you have to weld these up on the top like this and that way when you're lining it with the refractory you can pull the forge off and rotate it and put it down at a different angle to help line with the cement. So I'll get these welded on and then we'll get on to the kale wool. Okay, so I cut about 24 inches of this kale wool, which should be enough to line in that. So this is the Mizzou refractory, but this kale wool needs to be lined because it has a lot of bad fibers it'll come off when it's burned so dave came up with uh, this technique where you just take a really wet mix of the refractory and you just pop the the kale wool in there and you just slosh it all over get it soaked into the kale wool and this will actually line the kale wool so all the fibers don't come off so you just get a nice little soak get this all soaked in all right then we're gonna wind this back up like a cinnamon roll grab this kale wool and stuff it in the forge Wind this up a little bit more. Stuff it in the forge here. So I hope I didn't do too much of this. And then we'll actually have to start on this other side because we have to get it up on the nails. So those nails are gonna hold this in place. definitely used 
way too much of this kale wool. So I'm gonna have to cut this. Looks like we might need more around 18 inches instead of 24 inches. Okay, so I've got this tucked right around the soft brick and up on the hooks, up on the nails. And now I ended up cutting about four inches off of here. So I would go with about 20 inches and that should be enough to do this forge right here. All right, so I need to cut out this hole for the four, for the burner. I'm gonna shove that burner back in there. Put it in about the spot. Looks like it needs to go. Okay, I just gave that burner a little a little tack weld, so it'll kind of hold in the, to where it's supposed to go. And it's looking about good, perfect in there, I'm assuming. So now we just need to start lining this with the refractory. So I've made more of a, a cement texture and we just need to start plopping this stuff in here like this. Try not to make a huge mess of the forge or the fo shop floor. Just start pushing this stuff up the sides, to the back. And just as you go, kind of shape things to make them look about right. Just making this look more like a forge floor here. Okay, just gotta let this set up a little bit and then we'll flip it to the last pin and then get that last side.
And just as you're going on this, just, uh, you know, shape it and make it look pretty. Give it a nice curve in here so that the, the, the burner will rotate or the flame will rotate in here. Cause that's kind of what it's all about. It's about the flame just kind of spiraling and giving an efficient heat. Make sure to do is stick a, uh, a stick or something through here just to ensure that none of this burner is obstructed because you just want it to flow nicely so it's got this uh, half inch round steel bar and I'm gonna pop right up in to the burner through the burner and just make sure that we've got that hole cleared out So we're just gonna let this thing hang out here for a day or two, and then we'll come out and light the uh, burner and see what we can get. Okay, this is the day after. It's been about 24 hours since I put the refractory in this, so I think it's dry enough or cured up enough that we can give it a test. So full disclosure, I've already turned this on and kind of adjusted the burner a little bit so that it stays on. There's still a little bit of sputter, so I have to figure out what exactly is causing that. And then I haven't really welded this up completely yet. But, so I've got this at 30 PSI, which is what Dave recommends to run this. And then we will just, Got the gas going. And as you can see, we've got a nice spiral in there. And you can hear that sputter. I just have to figure out what's causing that and then uh, do some adjustments to, to get rid of that. But as you can see, we've got a working forge. I just need to get some bricks cover the back and the front of this and we'll get that hose out of the way so it doesn't burn up. The only other thing I'm thinking about doing is after I run this for a little bit I may put some metal right here something something similar to this just to keep the heat from you know getting getting to this stuff. I don't think it will but until this thing gets fully heated up I I can't really tell where the heat's going to go. So I may just put one of these on this side and then one on this side just to protect the hose and then the, the burner. So we'll see what happens. And then I just also want to show you this really quick. This is the regulator that I have. This is a, a 0 to 100 PSI regulator. The one I have on my other one is a 0 to 30 because my other forge actually run at like five to 10 PSI, depending on what I'm doing. So this, I believe they have, not this one in particular, this is a, a Celsius Marshall or something like that. But I believe you can get these at Harbor Freight, but you wanna be able to go at least 30 PSI. And I think once it's started and warmed up, you can lower it and adjust it just depending on what you're doing in the forge. And there was one other thing I had to clarify. It, I believe it was in the beginning of this video or during the burner video, I said that this would run 60 hours on a 25 pound tank, but it's 60 hours on a 25 gallon tank. So that's a hundred pound tank. That's the big one. Still, that's pretty efficient. So nothing to sneeze at. Anyway, if you have any questions on this, please feel free to ask and I will answer anything I can. And also, if you follow Dave Lish and go check out his stories where he builds his same forge, 
he may have mentioned something that I didn't or say something in a way that's more understandable. So anyway, appreciate you watching and we'll see you in the next video.